So on today's show, we're going to be talking about Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Tomlinson, and John Michael Schmidt. But first, I want to make sure you guys are subscribed. I have a goal for myself and just a goal for the channel in general. 15,000 subscribers before the start of next season. I'm actually in a sub-battle race with our New Orleans Saints channel. We're having a little competition. First one to 15,000 subs. Listen, guys, I hate the Saints. I know you hate the Saints. It's free. Just go down there and hit that subscribe button. It really will help me out. And, hey, if you just want to stick it to the Saints and you don't even really care about the subscription, just go down there, stick it to the Saints, and hit that sub button. Welcome in the Vikings now. I am your host, Patrick Seatman. On today's show, like I mentioned, Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Tomlinson, and John Michael Schmidt. But first, we're going to start off. Should the Vikings extend Kirk Cousins? There's been a lot of talk on this, kind of thrown around on Twitter. And The Athletic, their beat reporter, Alec Lewis, he actually suggested this in his last article. Alex Lewis, he said the Vikings should extend Kirk Cousins. He was kind of getting at the point that this is the number one, uh, it's the best case scenario for the Vikings offseason. Cousins, he's under contract through the 2023 season. And honestly, if the Vikings were going to extend him, the number one positive of this, without really getting into the numbers, which we will do, is it would just reduce the cap pit on this next year's cap. And that's obviously huge. The Vikings are sitting at $25 million over the cap right now. And if you would extend Kirk, restructure that contract a little bit, you could really save a lot on this year's cap. But this brings up the great debate, the Kirk debate. And that is, can Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins take you to the Super Bowl? My initial response to this is yes. I think Kirk Cousins and I think a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL are good enough to take you to the Super Bowl. And if you look at what the Niners did this past year with Brock Purdy, yes, Brock Purdy is a good young quarterback, but he wasn't really the person driving that bus. Do I think Kirk Cousins can be a bus driver on a Super Bowl team? No, probably not. But if you put the right roster around him, I do think Kirk is good enough to be a Super Bowl on a champion or be the quarterback on a championship team. Now let's look at the kind of contract details because we do need to dive into this. Right now, Kirk, he's just under contract for this upcoming year. And his average salary this upcoming year is $35 million. All of that is guaranteed, all $35 million of that. And if he was traded post-June 1st, the cap savings on Kirk Cousins. So let's just say it's the middle of June, July, and the Vikings decide to move off of Kirk Cousins. They would save $30 million, and only $6.25 million would be put in the dead cap. Overall, Kirk Cousins this past season, I thought he was okay. Honestly, if you talk about Kirk in the 2021 and 2020 seasons, statistically, I think he was a little better. But this past year, I mean, throwing 66% completion percentage, 4,500 yards, 29 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Kirk Cousins is overall just a solid quarterback. And you may be asking, why would you extend Kirk Cousins? I think overall, he is a solid quarterback. He's in that 10 to 15 range. For me, as quarterbacks in the NFL, I think there's obviously a lot of young and upcoming quarterbacks who are better than him. And I also think he gives you another year to find that franchise quarterback. If you don't love where you're sitting in this next year's draft, we don't love Anthony Richardson at 23, you don't love Will Levis or a Hendon Hooker, I think it gives you another year. If you extend Kirk Cousins, it gives you another year to go find that other guy. And yes, Kirk Cousins can win you games. And also, it will reduce the cap pit for this next upcoming year. But I will say this, you're going to need to have to take a risk eventually. Yes, like I said, I think Kirk Cousins is good enough to win you a Super Bowl, but he can't be the bus driver on that Super Bowl team. If you look at the past Super Bowl champions, their quarterbacks were the ones driving the bus. I think eventually you're going to need to take a risk. It could be a guy like an Anthony Richardson, who I'm really starting to fall in love with in this upcoming year's draft. I just think, yes, Kirk Cousins, it's the safe play here. I do think eventually you're going to need to move all your chips to the center and go all in and take that risk eventually. But this is the best part about the channel. I want to get your guys' thoughts. And this would be the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break comes, take advantage of it, let the ad play, and answer this question down below. Do you want to extend Kirk Cousins? I'll make this the pinned comment like I just mentioned. Type Y for yes or N for no if do you want to extend Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Now, Dalvin Tomlinson, some breaking news today. No more rumors than the Vikings channel. We actually had some news. A report came out that Dalvin Tomlinson, he pushed back his void year date to March 15th. And this is extremely significant because Dalvin Tomlinson, he is set to become a free agent this upcoming year. And he had a pretty solid year for the Vikings 
this past season. But he is set to become a free agent in this upcoming year. This pretty much just means the Vikings will have more time to work on a contract extension. Now, Vikes Insider, it's a great Twitter account. I do recommend if you haven't, or if you aren't following them, to follow them right now. They broke it down pretty simply. They said defensive tackle Dalvin Tomlinson and the team agreed to move his contract void date to March 15th. What does this mean? If Minnesota and Dalvin Tomlinson reach a Neil deal before March 15th, just $2.5 million of dead cap from the old deal will count towards the 2023 cap instead of $7.5 million. Pretty much this was a great move on both sides. I think this is honestly Dalvin Tomlinson trying to maybe get that longer extension and the Vikings honestly just trying to keep a really solid player. Because this past year, especially before he got hurt, he was solid. I love interior defensive linemen that can get to the quarterback. Those three sacks, he I think he had around 15 pressures that's not up there, but one forced fumble and one fumble recovery for Dalvin Tomlinson with 42 tackles. He was a menace on the interior of this defensive line this past season. And Spotrack did a contract projection for Dalvin Tomlinson, which I could actually get behind. Normally, Spotrack kind of overvalues like a lot of these players, but they had him slated as a three-year, $25.5 million deal with the annual salary ending up being eight and a half million per year. And for that price, bring him back. Bring back Dalvin Tomlinson to Minnesota. Because like I just said, when he was healthy at the beginning of this year, he was fantastic. He was that disruptive force on the interior of that defensive line who can also get to the quarterback. That is such a rare kind of trait and characteristic of a defensive lineman when they do have that pass rushing ability and you are going against that center and guard. To be able to get to the quarterback and that interior pressure, it's a huge Huge positive for this Vikings team. So for that price, I'm bringing them back. But let me know, how much per year are you willing to give Dalvin Tomlinson? Probably floating through that Spo track projection around eight and a half million, maybe a little less, maybe around seven million. But if they sign him to like, let's just say a three-year, ten million dollar deal, I would not be too upset. But get down in the comments, let me know how much per year would you give Dalvin Tomlinson? Now the Garrett Bradbury placement. Staying in Minnesota in this upcoming draft, there's been a lot of talk on Vikings Twitter recently about who could be the next Garrett Bradbury for the Minnesota Vikings. I think it's this guy, John Michael Schmitz, the center out of Minnesota. If we just look at his PFF grades over the past three seasons, that's incredible. This right here, the 2022 grade at 92.3, this was the highest out of any offensive lineman in college football this past season. And I do think he's a little different. If you guys remember last year, Tyler Lindenbaum, Coming out of Iowa, Tyler Lindenbaum is probably the better prospect. Right now, John Michael Schmidt is supposed to be going late first to second to maybe late second. So I don't think the Vikings are – they don't have a second-round pick. So will you have to take him in round one, or could you trade up the round two and try to get him? But I do think you're going to need to find a Bradbury replacement because if the Vikings let Bradbury walk in free agency, I would honestly love this pick. Even if it's you are going to have to probably trade up to the second round to get a guy like this. But if you're letting Bradbury walk, and we saw this offensive line this past season, when Bradbury went out with injury, the whole dynamic changed. The whole the whole just continuity on the offensive line, it fell apart. Spotrack did the same thing with Bradbury. They gave a contract projection. Four years, yes, you are reading this right. Four years, $47 million at around $12 million per year. I'm sorry. He's just not getting that. He's just not getting that money, at least from the Vikings. Maybe he could go get that on the open market. And Bradbury, he was good this past year, but he wasn't great by any means. I think the Bradbury hype and uh, the excitement that came from him this past season came from two things. One, he was terrible the years before. So obviously when you're starting to get some production from a guy like that and some positive production, it's going to stand out noticeably more. Two, when the offensive line got hurt, or when he got hurt, the offensive line fell apart. So I think maybe Bradbury's value is kind of being a little escalated right now and a little blown out of proportion. But for $12 million a year, there's not a chance I'm giving Bradbury that salary. But also, I'm not taking John Michael Schmitz in round one. I'm just not going to take a center in round one. I know the Ravens did last year with Tyrell Lindenbaum, and I get it. Tyrell Lindenbaum's a great prospect, and he will still be a great center in the NFL. And John Michael Schmitz, he could be. He could be an 11- to 12-year starter for the Vikes, and he could be getting all pros. He could be the next Jason Kelsey. I just don't – I'm just not comfortable with taking the most value asset in the draft, that first-round pick, and wasting it on a center. I'm just against that. But I do want to get your guys' thoughts on this. What position do you think – the, or what position do you want the Vikings to draft? 
Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. It's been great hanging out with you guys, talking about the rumors and news from the Minnesota Vikings. Let me know. Get down in the comments. What position do you want the Vikings to draft?